Oh, there you go. Regular meeting of the Senate Roll call, please. Uh, Director Meeks? Here. Director Sela? Here. Director Silva? Silva. <laughs> Director Daphne? Present. Director Kelly? I'm here. Director Borthy? Yes, ma'am. Please join me in the pledge for the flag. I believe it's to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, does anybody wish to make any adjustments? I see we have Justin here. Is he on? Oh, and Jamie. Right. Oh, good evening. Good. So, let, should we move them up? Let's move them up. What, what items are they on? Okay. Um, on consent. What? Once on consent. Look in the back then. Where are the construction manager? Okay, so Tim is. President Gaffney, I think yeah. there might be a note on your. Um, on, uh, right under your binder that lists the, the consents and the. Oh, oh right there. Okay. <laughs> Ryan's on uh, 7C, which is a uh, consent calendar. <laughs> Jane is item 10. Should we approve the project before we approve construction management? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Or consider it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Thank you. So let's, can we do this then? Let's move nine to after consent and then 10 after nine. No, no, sorry. Okay, nine. Okay, let's move nine and 10 after consent. So move. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 and 12 also. Wait, that's Justin. Okay. Maybe I uh, may make a suggestion, Director Captain. Yes. Maybe you'd like to just move item E. Yes, down. <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to after twelve. So I'll make that motion. Move number eight down to number two, after twelve. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Can we have a second. Yeah, yeah. I did. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, the open public for mm -hmm. public to raise items not on the agenda. Do you have any public? I have yeah, public mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, before we do committee reports, I'd like to commend uh, our new clerk of the board. Okay. Um, committee report now. Ad hoc facilities committee. Boy, we went by yesterday and you can taste it. Uh, I didn't want to turn in here. I wanted to go down the road and just <laughs> it. Um, it's really looking amazing. All of the lights are in, all the air conditioning, heating, everything is in, uh, the boardroom, uh, other than there's no dais, um, and that's, I think, the last thing that's coming, it's all in. Um, the upstairs looks great, and the offices look great. Uh, so uh, tonight's agenda, we're going to be uh, approving the- Approving? Uh, huh? Reviewing. For the outsider, <laughs> I think they were just talking about it. Well, yeah, yeah but approving or not approving, <laughs> having a robust discussion regarding the outside, which will start hopefully right away. And uh, there you go, it, it's really looking good. We, we, uh, we had the tall person on the board, uh, and the short person on the board, me, uh. <laughs> Sit in front of a fake dais and <laughs> figure out exactly what I did to me. So, and then we switched it. We, we, we took turns one being the audience, or the other. it'll be good. I can't wait to get in there. I think it's gonna be nice. <clears throat> Is there a gym? Pardon me? Um, is there a gym? There is, there is up in uh, where the um, outdoor, outdoor exercise. There's, there's some facilities outside, and we can go over that when we look at the. Oh, great. Yeah. Finance committee. Uh, we met and reviewed 10 of the items that are on tonight's agenda. So, yeah, just about 
I don't know an easy way to summarize it except that we asked the staff last point. It seems like everything is in order. And we didn't get financials this month because they're being rolled into the year end. Year end. Yeah. So that's why you didn't receive financials in your packets and items. CMSA. Sure. I'll take a Let me know what's the light. Uh, <laughs> Board Commissioner Kelly. Oh. Will be in. Is one year term. That's not even. Sure. So it's RBSE's time again. There you go. So. Yes. Yeah, that's that's uh, it's good that we have representation on a board where we're paying 50% of the fee for it. Yes. Um, of course, we only get 33% of the reputation, re representation because it circles amongst the three, not amongst the five. Mm -hmm. We've gotten 100% of the awards this year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was it. There wasn't too much else. Um, we appointed uh, people to the finance committee. We didn't change that. You're still on the finance committee. Oh, good. We didn't change anybody's position. They, uh, uh, he's uh, Michael's still representing um, uh, uh, North Bay Watershed. Uh, nobody's changed. Um, we had to nominate the board chair and the vice chair to be backups for the agency representative of California Association of Sanitary Agencies. We reviewed our 24 business plan and we made some small changes to our hauling waste policy, making it more fair. People shouldn't have to pay the same or different loads. So we kind of made it more. And they have, to be, and they have to be responsible for what they bring in. That's right. Bringing stuff and it clogs up our pipes out of here. And, uh, we we had this happen with one of the vendors came in and clogged up the pipes when they dumped, and we knew that it was them because it was clogged after they left. And we went to them, and they took care of the fees to fix it. Um, so that's going to become the normal now, and hopefully people will be clogged. Okay. Okay. Any Thank you. North Bay. Cancel. 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 Yeah. Okay. Just the meeting, not the whole organization. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cancel culture. Verbal resort general manager. <laughs> All right. Um, just a couple of brief things this month. Um, last month, we had some discussion about how many septic systems are there in the Ross Valley Sanitary District. Yeah. Mm. And we don't have an exact number for you, but we have uh, some different answers in the range that will work. There are 39 known systems by County of Marin who regulate them. Um, and out of those 39, 31 are in Fairfax. And <laughs> with nine on Cascade, 10 on Kane, two on Pine, four on Bolinas, and there's six others. But the county believes there may be 13 additional systems uh, on parcels in our district. So their guess is 52. We did, we did an independent search uh, of parcels and looking at who pays who are service charges and who doesn't. And we have a number that could be as high as 83. So that's kind of the upper end of what we think might be possible. So yeah, 39, 52, 83. So we're working on um, uh, defining that for a better answer and a little bit more research. Do we know where the 15 and 15? Do we know where the ones we found are or where the other yeah. ones? Yeah, the uh, you know 39, we, we got the list of addresses that all that all makes sense. And we're also doing an analysis of who might be paying sewer service charges that have septic systems. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're getting to the bottom of it. Um, but it, yeah, there's still more work to do. Uh, but we're also working in parallel um, to uh, uh, make recommended modifications to our lateral replacement loan program to include septic to sewer conversions that benefit public health and the environment. So uh, staff plans to bring suggested changes to our ordinance 74, um, which uh, through, with some changes for eligibility uh, would be um, very little effort, and very little changes to be able to augment uh, the population of uh, 
parcels that would be uh, eligible to receive the financial assistance from the district. So it's fairly straightforward. We just need to uh, run, run uh, some suggested language by the board and see if they're comfortable moving forward with that. Have you, sorry, board member first. Thank you. Have you uh, determined that none of those 39 known septic systems are paying West Valley bills? Uh, I I don't know. Well, I'm looking at that because it, it may at some point they may look for some sort of a refund. And I think we have a three year backwards policy. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. So we'll 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 have more definitive information on that question in the coming weeks. I'd like you know we could make a rule that uh, if they've been paying and when they connect, we credit them like we did that one person. Which is Emily Clear. Yeah. And then. Would we give them a higher grant than we get for a lateral? Well, we're we're not. Uh, our initial proposal is not to uh, use grants. To reduce, just to reduce, or because grants would be a use of the public funds mm -hmm. for a private investment. Mm -hmm. uh, without the same nexus, that, you know, for for lateral replacements, we have a nexus mm -hmm. with our need to reduce I and I mm -hmm. and prevent our sewer spills and, and and lower the impact on the treatment. So we were able to create a nexus there for the grant. Uh, we don't see a clear nexus for septic to sewer conversion, unless we were given some sort of program that was state or federally funded. So we're proposing that the financial assistance would be limited to loans, low interest loans that are paid back. And that's what we do for the lateral loan program. We have, a uh, last I checked, we had 87 properties in our district that were part of the loan program that received a lien, you know, or a line item on their property tax bill to do the annual payments for a 10 year and 4% of the whole And we could use that same mechanism uh, for the septic to sewer conversions if the board approves a change to the ordinance. So we're looking into that, and following up on, on your suggestion to look into financial structure. So we'll be bringing that back for consideration at a future board meeting in August or September with our guests at this time. Um, next uh, report, just acknowledging that today was our ribbon cutting event for Pump Station 14 in Larkspur. Thank you all for attending. We have all the board members present and staff and our uh, district council was there. <laughs> and uh, uh, it went well, I, we had a drone you take pictures of the event, and I counted over 50 people. Wow. So that was a nice turnout. And thanks everybody for bringing folks. Great remarks. Thanks to uh, Board Member Borstein for providing music for the event with his newly named Horse Main Quintet. <laughs> so thank you. Um, and, and that went well. We we are in touch. I guess the Marin IJ is following up with us on that. So to see if there are any positive press for it. 1111 11 Anderson, we've heard a little bit from the facilities committee today, and we have items on the agenda, so I really want to say that that's really important. Um, and I mentioned it last month, but yes, another award for our organization, CASA has selected our agency to receive the Organizational Excellence Award. I believe that's not based on small or large, that's, that's all agencies in the state that are CASA members. It's for our competency-based training, program and the standard operating procedures we developed that system and, and having staff really participate heavily in that. Um, and for the conference, we'll receive the award on Thursday, August 10th during the luncheon at CASA. And we made a video for that luncheon that they'll show uh, and that all the folks, all the board members and GMs and everybody in CASA will see that video when they present the award to our organization. So that's going to happen. Absolutely. And there's one for the year for all of CASA? Yes. We need to get t shirts now. <laughs> all these You're going to mention that to Adrian. They're going to have to leave a wall yeah. free at 11 and 11 and 11 for awards. Yeah, yeah. It, we yeah. Have. yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, that, that was. Uh, you know, the, the benefits of the program really are for the safety of our staff, the consistency of the procedures, and then retaining institutional knowledge uh, when people retire or move on, and that sort of thing. And then it's easy to understand formats that are pictorial. 
Uh, so it's it's a good system. Uh, Jim McPherson of CTX helped get us started with that. And we'll definitely acknowledge him as a task accomplished. And uh, we carry on his uh, vision, our version of his vision in the program going forward. So you know, congratulations. That, yeah, no. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that's it for my, uh, my, my monthly report, but happy to answer any questions about that or other issues. I really like the reception. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Okay, verbal report by board members and request for future. Oh, I just want to say this is this is probably yeah you know, we're going to get something in the IJ because I got irritated. We're getting all these awards and oh, Adrian yeah, writes about us all the time. And when we were in the newspaper, it was always bad. You know, mm -hmm. so I wrote an email to him and copied Rob, the publisher, and he sent back some questions, which I sent to Steve. Steve replied to him. He sent back some more. Steve replied again. I sent him an email as well. Um, so I hopefully we're gonna get some love in the paper. We, you know, they certainly I mentioned this to Rob once before, they certainly don't hesitate to mention their own awards. <laughs> like, funny how that happens. Yeah, you got a big article, you got a big article on Los Colinas about two to two mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments by Okay. Uh consent calendar. Matters of the end of this item can simply continue to be enacted on one motion unless somebody wants to remove an item. We have um, the IT. Yeah, I just like to pull that D off just to make a comment. Okay, CND or? No, just D. Oh, yeah, CND. I'm sorry. Okay. Any others? No. Yeah. Okay. okay, this uh, Michael, what would you like? No, I just wanted to say that Ryan was at the finance committee meeting with the general public, um, who was listening, and um, he's been with the district for a really, really long time and has been doing a really, really great job. And he's always there, I know, for me and I think other board members when we went to disaster, and so I'm thrilled. That uh, he's still doing that with us and is going to be here to set up the new building with us. That's what I wanted to say. Sure. And he's converting us to the uh, to the cloud instead of the hardware for the data disaster. Yeah, no, for data disaster. Hi, Ryan. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> All the time they call you and I'm family. Just me. Okay, Ryan, any other comments on that? I moved the okay. that calendar. Does Ryan want to say anything? He said no. Okay, okay, great. All right, a second. Move that calendar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimous. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, let's go to item eight. Nine. Nine. Okay, item nine. <laughs> Consideration of awarding its authorizing the GM plan is even open to the council to execute a construction contract in the Rodney SD Campus with post side concrete and construction in an amount of $1,247,500. Steve, would you like to? Sure, I'll take it. Yeah, 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 I'll take it. This is the second phase of the headquarters project. It's outside the building. We really we purposefully separated the building remodel from the site improvements just to you know, put things on track. Um, and we learned a few things about the size as well. So we learned that bit of, uh, from figuring things out the uh, second phase. Um, and we had a different designer. You know, we had the architect for the building, and for this project, it was really a landscape architect. And that expertise was able to um, perform the scope, which includes reconfiguring the parking of the uh, formerly Comcast building to fit the sewer utilities needs and the, the specialty vehicles that we have, and reorienting parking so that um, they can get at, in and out easily uh, to respond to emergencies as, as, as we need. And to have secure parking. Because you know as well as anyone how valuable the vehicle fleet is here at Rock Valley and specialized, and so we need to be secure as it is now at its current facilities. So, 
Uh, those are two critical path uh, items on the proposed site improvements um, that we hope to be constructed early in the contract phase if you were on uh, track to facilitate the uh, moving of our operations from both the Kerner facility and large landing facility to this new Anderson facility. But we can't really move our operations until we have a secure parking for the fleet. Um, so uh, the good news with this proposal is we received bids, uh, three bids and a competitive bidding and one of them was about 16% above our estimate. Um, and that's in the range of, you know, within our budgeted amount in, in this year's budget. Uh, the other bids were outside of the range of our estimated budget. And so we're glad to see that at least the one bid was responsive and responsible uh, from Coast Guide, Coast Side Concrete Construction. Uh, and we do recommend awarding the contract. A little background on them. They were the same contractor that uh, performed the creek sewer removal project oh, really? in a competitive bid in that project under budget on time, no problems with the regulatory agency. So they, they did good work for us before. They also do work for us uh, in the Ordinance 110 work, which is our projects between sixty and $200,000 at least. Um, we award periodically uh, to deal with spot or capital needs in the district. Uh, they're one of the um, contractors we've used for you know, fixing manholes and that sort of thing. So they have a track record here. And so we're, uh, we have a, an extra level of confidence in them as a contractor because of our experience working with them. Um, yeah, and, and bids were open very recently. So I think today was the day when if we received bid protests, uh, we would know by now that the board meeting and I'm looking at Phil and I don't think we've received a board or uh, a bid protest. Yes, that's good news. <laughs> so um, that's all my background on the project. Uh, Phil, I was wondering if you have anything else to add for the board. Uh, just, yeah, a couple things. I mean, you can see that Coastside Concrete, their bid came in right, you know, within our expected range. It does fall outside the range of the other bids, which sometimes could raise questions. But as Steve mentioned, we've got good experience working with this contractor, both in the district and I've worked with Coastside in uh, previous, previous uh, places at the city of Petaluma, uh, working on, uh, you know, complex projects like Creek restoration, uh, creek area restorations, and they're uh, also skilled with work on facilities like parks and uh, landscape things involving a landscaping element where we want them to, you know, aesthetically please. They're sensitive to that, and also working with irrigation uh, requirements that would come from MMWD. Those those kinds of those kinds of arrangements. So it's. Um, very, very excited to have gotten a bid from them and looking forward to hopefully a, a successful project out there and keeping a tight schedule to get moved in. Do you think they would be worried if they left so much on the table? Their business? I, yeah. I, what do you think, Phil? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, whenever you see that, uh, that much of a disparity, like I said, it, it, it does kind of raise questions um, there. It, and, and as I said, this, this contractor having a, a known track record, he, 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 he knows that he can get a job done for, of this type for, for that, for that price that he's offering us. Um, it, he knew that they were going, to, that the other bidders were going to come in a lot higher uh, I think that he runs a much leaner operation than a lot of of uh, landscaping contractors that may have been, you know, that that would typically bid this type of work. And he knows that he can get the bulk of the work, the heavy, the heavy civil work, completed rapidly. So I think that that's that's where he's anticipating to kind of hammer the schedule, which I think will help us ultimately as well. As that's that's kind of the critical path for our. Move in. He, he, you know, 
you may have even made a remark to that effect as all contractors would, but he's still quite a bit above the engineer's estimate. Yeah, that's true. And the, you know, and the other ones were way above the engineer's estimate to the level where we might be having a different conversation. Uh, if that was all we're going to see. Well, it's the landscape architects, right? I mean, yeah. it's not our internal engineer. Yeah, we use that, you know. Yeah. Good, yeah, good point. Um, One million and seventy is the uh, landscape architect. That, uh, so it's it, it's a, it's kind of a sweet spot where, you know, he's, he's making, he put his pride out there where, where he thinks he can make money on the job and it's not too high relative to what we prepared to find. He, they know what the they knew what the cost estimate was when before they bid yes that's yes. public information yes i mean because yes. that is, that steve told us that the finance committee was if the if they'd all been wildly over we would have been talking about rebidding potentially or having another conversation so he actually gets the job because he didn't go of well, the stratosphere <laughs> with the other guys. He wouldn't have gotten the job. Maybe nobody would have gotten yeah. the job. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good, it's a good game. <laughs> um, I don't see anything here on either trees or signage. Did I miss something? I'm on the list here. I'm going to put on the bid of the yeah. Uh, well, yeah, all of that is within these bid items. And uh, the plans, uh, we'd go back to uh, the April board meeting when we provided you to the uh, plans and, and, um, no, for notice inviting bid. So, yeah, the detailed plans I, we didn't put into this board. I was there in April. Okay. They showed the, the trees, the native vegetation. So, so they were in one of these categories yes. landscape, uh, great, uh, you know. I, I I believe it's all in uh, bid item two, which is landscape demolition. So on the demo sheets, those have tree removal, vegetation removal, uh, like clearing and grubbing. Typically, is is all wrapped up into that that item right there. And, and the, do we need? Um, I, I see the licensing on the top, which is a good difference in the third and that. But do we need licenses to take down heritage trees or trees that are certain width? Not in the city of San Rafael. We don't have any heritage trees on the site. That's right. Can you explain to us the, the facilities the committee that actually the of some of these trees? Uh, we I, did prepare an arborist report as part of the okay. um, submittal package to the planning department of the city of San Rafael, um, and and no heritage trees were identified requiring additional permits. But there are building permit costs, um, which are uh, possibly part of this. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fire uh, people from the new organization we had voted in a couple years back into my house, and they're making my landlord take down three trees. We should do it. Yes. Okay, any further comments by the board? I'll make a motion that we award and authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council for FTP construction contract for the RBSB headquarters site improvement project number 901B with Coastside Concrete and Construction Inc. in the amount not to exceed $1,247,500. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? We're going to get public. Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> now the next item is item 10. This would be... Um, or engineering for construction management services with a not to exceed bid of 128,000. Yeah. Um, thank you, President Gaffney. And this item related to previous item nine is uh, the proposed uh, construction management contract with Park Engineering. Jamin Park is here with us, um, and he has been working for us. Doing construction management on the 1111 Anderson headquarters uh, remodeling project that has come to a close and a successful um, finish. Um, still, a few uh, punch list items remaining, a uh, few, few small items remaining in that project. Um, Jamin's uh, very familiar with the site. Uh, he's, he's done uh, um, formidable work. Uh, 
managing the remodeling project because midstream, the board meeting room was changed mm -hmm. from the second floor to the first floor. And, and this relied heavily on, on park engineering to make sure that uh, the accounting for you know every fixture and element and detail of the original plans were translated appropriately to the new plans and you know the opportunity for mischief uh, in, in that type of translation uh, they, they were great guardians of the district's interest to make sure that uh, we helped the contractor uh, get a proper account uh, through the, especially that type of transition and there have been others so we really are grateful for park engineering's close attention in that project and feel that they're a logical fit and effect, uh, effective and efficient decision for us to move forward with them to help with the exterior of the building. And so that's my pitch. I really appreciate Jamin's uh, help with the, the vertical improvements because that's not really our main thing around here. We, you know, we deal with horizontal sewer improvements uh, with the best of them, but when it comes to doing a building remodel, it's great to have uh, Jamin around to help out. So, uh, we recommend that you, you put together a letter of proposal. It's, it's an attachment to the staff report. And uh, I think we have a chance to look at that. And we feel it's a very reasonable proposal that was presented to the instructions for both. And I don't know, Phil, you want to add anything before we hand over to Jamin? Sure. Uh... With, with this type of project, it's, you know, maintaining as much continuity as possible, handing it over uh, to Jamin, J uh, to Park Engineering, keeps that vehicle moving. It's, you know, this this project is 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 901B. So it's a sub project to that original project. So it's, um, it's, it's good to keep the same, the same cook in the kitchen. And Jamin's been doing a fantastic job, as well as his inspector, Chris, is uh, very well versed with the city of San Rafael, and it it's it's been a good thing working with them. There's uh, a little bit of overlap on some between some of these projects. Uh, there's electrical that was installed that comes outside, and there's you know we need to make sure that both ends of these things meet up, and and Park Engineering's all over that, so. It, like I said, continuity, maintaining that is, is, is key. But um, yeah, other than that, I'll turn it back over to Steve or to Jamin. And Jamin, is there anything uh, you'd like to, you know, on your review of the site plan, is there anything uh, of interest or maybe a little challenging that you see uh, in the site improvements that are proposed? Um, not so much, actually. I think the project, uh, at least the site project, is, should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's kind of nice that Coastside actually got the project. I've uh, I've have past experience working with them um, as well, so the, I I really do see the project going pretty smoothly compared to you know some of the other projects. So I, I do think uh, the overlap um, going from the building right out to the site actually does help quite a bit because we do have the uh, electrical charge stations and that sort of stuff that's kind of connected with the building. Um, so I do see this project going. Uh, relatively smooth uh, hopefully we can get it knocked out pretty quick uh, and get everybody moved into the building so um but and i'm definitely looking forward to working on uh, on the second phase of this project thank you thank you jamin uh comments by board members i'm just curious jamin where have you worked with coast side before and what cities or yeah, so the last time I worked with Coastside was up in the city of Novato. Um, I did a, it was basically a roadway improvement with a trail. Uh, so there was some concrete work, some paving work, very similar to this. We had some driveways, uh, new ADA ramps, and then there was some landscaping that uh, that met up with the trail uh, alongside the roadway. Uh, we had a little bit of underground work, some storm drains and some sewer lines, um, as well as some electrical work. So. A lot of similarities to the work. It's just that I was mostly a residential type roadway versus a parking lot with site improvements, but a lot of similarities. And they and they did a great job on that project. Well, I think it's good that we're having one construction management fee. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. As opposed to having two. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree with one. Okay. Uh, any other comments by board members? I move. Hold on. We got chat, right? So I move we approve and authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council 
to execute a consultant services agreement for construction management services with Park Engineering for the RBSD headquarters site improvement project in the amount not to exceed $128,033. A second. Michael Bidick? Yeah, Michael Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the number Nope, we're 11 and 12. Then we'll go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Consideration of awarding your own license. Yeah. Construction contract. The Lynchstation's 20, 32, Pump Station Improvement Project, number 907, with Pacific Infrastructure, Infrastructure Corporation, and amount not to exceed 3 million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand three hundred four. All right. Now I'm going to get started again. Uh, Phil, Matt, clean up for me. Uh, but I'll, get, I'll get it going with the, the big picture. Um, this project uh, has evolves a little over the last couple of years. You know, we started with the lift station 20 design um, because it's really the top lift station priority for renovation in our district based on the infrastructure asset management plan risk uh, risk assessment exercise that we performed uh, going on two years ago. And midstream, uh, we realized that 31 and 32, which are Next highest on the list, uh, or you know, second and fourth, um, have the same pumping system that's problematic at one station planning. It's a, a wet pit, dry pit. They're known as Gorman rough pumps that just require a lot of maintenance and rebuilding. And um, and most of our pumps in the small lift stations in our district are submersible flight pumps now, and they, they're really low maintenance. And they uh, they they perform very well and it's, it's really more of a state of the art. And so these projects have been put off because of the rush of the infrastructure work we need to do to comply with our statewide order uh, and address some higher risk issues like you know, our large diameter sewers were collapsing and all those things. So we've, we've addressed those issues. And now these uh, projects have come to the forefront as far as uh, the, the highest risk assets that we're managing at this time. So. There's, uh, we lumped together these three pump stations that are smaller, uh, known as lift stations, they uh, actually just lift sewer up to a gravity sewer and it flows down from there. A pump station, you actually pump into a pressurized pump of uh, quartz main system. So these aren't quite as high tech, I would say, and they're smaller, they're only three or five horsepower pumps. So, uh, but the installations are still complex. We're still talking about a million dollars at least for Excavation because of all the excavation and the electrical panels and um, things that we rely on for um, 24 7, 365 reliability, even in these smaller parts of our uh, system. You know, those stations are needed in flat parts of uh, Bay Area communities uh, because we get things up and over to the treatment plants. It's very common, not just in our district, but have many of the stations down in the flat areas. So we're getting to these, and these are our top priorities. Getting to the bid, um, you know, we're finding, as with the remodeling projects, you know, the vertical improvements, uh, like these pump stations, are more expensive. Uh, they're coming in higher bids than our engineer's estimate, whereas we've had four good fortune on our horizontal work where we've had low bid below engineer estimate. We're not seeing that here again. Uh, the lowest bid that came in was about 10% above engineer's estimate for the three pump stations and two little force veins that are part of this overall scope. Um, and then uh, one of the anomalies that we saw this time was uh, when Phil got busy going through the bid tabulation uh, line by line, he discovered that the low bidder had uh, made a mathematical error and the actual bid quantities added up to more like 2.9 million, which we're happy to see because we had 3 million 100,000 estimate. And so we'd love for them to do it for that. But since there was an anomaly, <clears throat> we offered uh, the low bidder the option to withdraw the bid. 
uh, which they exercised that option then on that Monday. And so the recommendation at this time is to uh, award to the next uh, lowest bidder who uh, we did a thorough review of their bid package and determined that they were responsive and responsible. Now they're also the same contractor that just completed the pump station 14, 24, and 25 project that we just had a little ceremony about. And we're, we're very pleased with their responsiveness and professionalism over that long two year period uh, when we were together being patient with supply chain issues um, and worked through several challenges here and there, uh, but generally a, a very positive working relationship. So, uh, from my perspective, even though it's 19.8% above the, the engineer's estimate, um, it's uh, still a lot of reasons why it's a good value and a good choice to go forward. And can as, I explain, over. as I explained in the uh, staff report, yeah, there's a fiscal impact of being, you know, $600,000 over budget. Uh, but we can't absorb that because this is going to be spread out over a year, we expect, with supply chain issues remaining, uh, and that we may be in the next fiscal year as far as expenditures related to this project. So that's one factor. Another is we have some flexibility within capital reserves and the, the overall capital budget to absorb this anomaly, but uh, we'll be watching it closely. Uh, as the year goes on, so um, it's something that we believe we can manage. So I, I we do recommend to go with uh, the second lowest bidder, Pacific Infrastructure, for the reasons I described. And uh, Phil, uh, do you have anything to add? Sure. Uh, yeah, for this one, the bidding, uh, we we received five bids. It was pretty good spread of of bids ranging from three three point four up to uh, over 5 million for the project. So it was um, a little interesting on that on that note, but um, Pacific infrastructure is loop, loop, lumped right in there with more, more of the, uh, I would say the mean of the bids. They're, they're the lowest of, of that pack of, of responsive bids. They're, they are the lowest. Um, and as Steve said, we've had a good track record with PIC in the past on this most recent project and, and uh other experience with this contractor going back further they are it's it's good to know having a, a contractor that's well versed in the current state of of supply chain issues like that we saw with pump station 14 uh being able to anticipate that and 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 know that they are a capable contractor when it comes to floating a project like this along for for a, a longer duration than as been previously expected on projects of this type. So definitely our recommendation is is awarding to PIC. And yeah, that's that's all I have. Why why would the low bidder if his unit costs add up to something, why would he be allowed? So his uh so the the unit costs for each lift station they they didn't um, they didn't total up to the amounts that they had totaled. So their their subtotals for each lift station were wrong. The subtotals were their targets that they were planning to hit, and I believe it was something with with the software program that they were using to estimate or, or where the lines got crossed. But um, they they could only they could see that we can only pay to each bid item that they have listed their their unit cost or, or or in these case like individual lump sums and contractually that's all we can pay out uh they did not have their profit into that is is what it is what it looks like to me i i you know the speculation and therefore they um they requested to withdraw their bid uh Technically speaking, I rejected their bid uh, based upon it being non-responsive, and they are are not contesting that. But they, you know, it's you know, six of one and half dozen of another. But that's essentially yeah. Uh, so they actually had a total they wanted, 
but then didn't get their numbers this times that. Okay, all right. Correct. <laughs> Any other comments? Or I, I have one. Don't mean to nitpick. But on each station, what, what page are you? I'm on the exhibit one, all the detail and stuff. Okay, the numbers. Board packet page 70. Mm, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, my son in law is a painter. Uh, for each lift station, it's 20 grand to paint. Uh, I mean, what are we talking about? For each one, it's so $60,000 for painting. I'm just curious. I don't know how big it is. I don't know if it's 20 coats or. I'm just curious. It seems like so I would say, I mean, just in general, uh, material cost for painting for these industrial coatings is a lot higher than you would expect for a residential project. Um, a project, uh, just in general. Uh, also, these these are all high performance coatings. Uh, they're they require a considerable level of skill to apply, and Again, those the the cost of those materials has skyrocketed in recent years for environment to, to produce high performance coatings that meet environmental uh, standards. So, um, I believe that there is wet well coating in this. So these are highly resistant uh, coatings that are industrial grade. Uh, so I I guess that's hopefully that kind of answers your question about that. Um, um, in terms of yeah, are they subcontracted self out? For the paint? Yes, I forget who they listed for painting, but that's that's almost oh. almost yeah. always uh, subcontracted out. Paint whenever you get into those types of coatings, in my experience. If I'm not let, mistaken, yeah. the twenty thousand because that's listed. Is that? The engineer's estimate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. And so what Pacific Infrastructure is getting it bid is 18, and the range is from 13.8 to 38. So right. we yeah, we said we thought it was gonna cost 20,000. The person who's getting the bid is thank you for that. Yeah, it's your Yeah, that's actually that's a, a good question. Dave. And, and a good answer in terms of uh, it's not the type of painting we're typically uh mm -hmm familiar with and it's a it's a real thick coating and uh, we specify painting the coating materials uh, that are marine grade you know, that really are in an area that can handle salty air and, and, uh, and damp conditions right so it's a lot different than our interior of our houses and that sort of thing right? well i can't help but say it reminds me of how we got the pcbs no, I, so, well, that's what i'm just saying no, like, we don't want to cut hairs on paint glass from it it's a joke because we don't make paint like that we use a lot of chalks that's right so, <laughs> that's that's that. right we get through the we have a lot of inside uh, jokes around there <laughs> yeah we have a submittal process we make sure that you know what what the contractor proposes to use uh meets the uh, strict specifications in our uh, contract document. Yes. Good. Both for protection of our liability and worker safety. <laughs> the big ticket item is the control panel. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just going over 15%. 15 over 15% yeah. goes off every time. So. Oh. <laughs> um, when you're... <laughs> Or is there provision to order those things that are right away on the project and we could reimburse the contractor? What's the you know? Do we order right away for the high need time problems? Or he orders the right contract? So yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh we pay for materials on hand typically is is the way that that our contract um our contracts usually play out. Uh, it's it's a good point. They're going to be as soon as as soon as uh, if, if the contract's awarded, we would then enter into a, a, the submittal phase ahead of ahead of giving notice to proceed. We would give a, a limited notice to proceed right away. The contractor would then begin the submittal process and begin the process of uh, procurement of these items, in particular the long lead time items like these 
electrical control panels. Uh, we have heard back that there's you know some substantial lead times on a lot of these items, and yes, the contractor would need to be prepared to uh, to carry that cost until time of at least uh, delivery. Um, there you know could be exceptions made to that in in certain circumstances, but I don't I, I don't see any at this moment that that we would need to uh, figure something out like that. Paying ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, part of the reason we, I mean, we were able to work pretty uh, constructively with Pacific Infrastructure on those issues, which did arise in the Pump Station 14 project. So we didn't really find ourselves in a situation of dealing with um, arbitrary delay claims and that sort of thing. You know, it was just, it was a, a understanding, productive relationship you know and, uh, and and you know we would we would come their way you know to, if they're running low on the cash or whatever but i wasn't in the details of those negotiations i don't know how often that actually came up yeah i mean and and to that point i mean it speaks volumes to the contractor pic i mean they bid that job in 2021 uh yes. with with basically prop with most likely 2020 dollars was how they would make their estimate. So to then, you know, look back at what a twenty twenty dollar is in present day, what they're ultimately getting paid for. I mean, it's 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 um, it speaks volumes to that contractor that they have given us such a good product and and with such little trouble in in terms of delay claims or anything you know related to that. Um, it yeah, it's 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 a good point to note as well. Um, I've got questions. Um, we have 219 pump stations. How many lift stations do we have? Yeah, so uh, I believe it's 12 uh, out of the 19 or lift stations, and that seven pump into the pressurized. Uh, system. How many of those 12 or more will be done with this project? Three. Yes, three out of 12. Yeah, so we got a lot more. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, but they're not as high risk. Okay. You know, and so you know, we're we're trying to fold this type of work in with our sewer uh, work, and so this is, I believe, a great time to to address these, but in a in a, in a batch, you know, mm -hmm. not just one off at a time, and then that 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 addresses some of the high risk stuff. There's one more high risk lift station which we call Heather Gardens or LS30, and that's uh, in design. You approved the design contract for that in April with Shop and Wheeler. Um, and so they're off and running on that. That's the one that is in Marksburg. Uh, there's a combined sanitary storm pump station that we're going to separate. So that's underway. To, uh, those are the high priority. The uh, four out of twelve um, are, are ones we think we need to work on now. Um, the other ones are few. You know, are staggered out in our capital improvement program. Any other questions? Anybody? I uh, move to that we award and authorize the general manager on review and approval of council to execute construction contract for the lift stations 20, 31, and 32 pump station improvements project, project number 907, with Pacific Infrastructure Corporation in the amount not to exceed $3,728,304. Did you second? Yes, sir. Okay, any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, now let's go on to the next item, which is the construction management process. Consideration of approving the authorizing the general management fund with you, council, to execute task order nine to the master services agreement construction management service with Solis. For lift stations 20, 31, 32, lift stations, and two lift project, uh, minus a total amount not to exceed 105,558. Very good. Uh, so, uh, similar, uh, or similar issue here where we're, we're going to afford a contract for construction and then have a contract in place for our construction management. Um, and uh, we do recommend SOMAS. Uh, assist us with this project 
um, for continuity and efficiency for the for the district. Uh, they're available. They sent us their uh, letter proposal. Uh, Justin, you're here representing the Thomas at the meeting today. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they've been helping us with the uh, upstation projects, uh, doing a great job of snow and keeping um, these projects on budget. And uh, they can only do so much on time right, because of supply chain issues. But we uh, had a very productive relationship with Justin and his team. Not only in the gravity sewer projects uh, that they're able to help us with, but also uh, the pump station project. Uh, so um, this proposal at three hundred five thousand uh, is below um, the percentage uh, that we've seen with some other uh, proposals at, at about eight percent, which we think is very reasonable. Um, and they're familiar with working with our electrical engineer designer uh, Todd Beecher. Uh, and you know, as well, new engineering who did this design to probably pay it down to pump station 14 and 25 design. So, it's this is a team that's working really well together. You saw the nice product today at the Ribbon Cut example, and uh, so they have a good idea of what our staff are looking for from an operations standpoint. You know, Noel and his crew, uh, and what they expect in terms of the interface and the electrical panels, uh, our designers. Uh, and then working with Pacific Infrastructure. So we jet the team uh, together to deliver another set of complex lift station projects like we saw in this last round. Uh, so I, I thank Justin for uh, the meeting. Um, and I think, you know, that's that's my pitch for the Phil, do you have anything to add? Or? No, not, not much to add. I would just say, yeah, it just seems like continuity seems to be the theme of the evening with these projects. I, you, you saw the, the product of, of both PIC and SOMAS and RVSD working together at Pump Station 14 on that project and just continuing that right into these lift stations is, um, yeah, a formula for success. Um, yeah. Yeah, the neighborhood... Yeah, you know, we had, a, we had the school next door there and, you know, and we, we had a good relationship with them and, and the neighbors and uh, the neighbors over along South Elysio, you know, that was pretty uneventful in the office buildings and uh, the residences. Here we've got this projects we have, uh, we're working on islands in Riviera Circle, so we're near houses, but not right up against them. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to keep the same low profile we were able to introduce. Um, and then and then lift station 20 is right next to uh, our hospice and uh, office building. So there is some sensitivity there, but I, I think I'm going in, I'm, I'm optimistic that we're, we've got a good track record of working with the team. So uh, yeah, Justin, thank you for, for attending and being available to answer any questions. Maybe you could uh, unmute and uh, if you got any thoughts about, you know, maybe some of the projects, uh, challenges you see here, or, you know, just our history working together. Yeah. Just a couple of things I want to, I want to touch on um, that have been brought up um, previously, but um, the bids, you know, I think we've seen a couple of projects, you know, um, come in over the engineer's estimate. That is kind of the trend recently. Um, we are, the, the bid environment is changing. So nothing really to be concerned about on that front. Uh, we're seeing that pretty much across the board. Um, I think a good portion of that has to do with procurement um, concerns, you know, um, that the supply chain has not ironed itself out in all respects, especially on the electronic side, uh, on the electrical side. Some of the other items are, are cleaning up, um, but, you know, going back to what's already been said about PIC, you know, we have a great working relationship with them and have for, for quite a few years. Um, and they're probably the, the most amicable contractor out there in the, that's doing, you know, in this in this area, in this space. Um, definitely don't seek claims. Um, we saw that on pump station 14, 24, and 25, you know, those delays. We're working with other contractors that, you know, we've been hit with delays um, for just about everything. And PIC is the exception to that rule. Um, so it's been, I'm looking forward to working with, working with them again. Um, we're bringing, bringing back essentially the same team as we had on 14, 24, and 25. So should be a good project, um, you know, as long as we can 
we, we, we can't control the procurement, but um, to the best of our ability, you know, we'll get those long lead items um, in production as soon as we can. And, you know, hopefully we have a good smooth project. That's all. And thank you for, for bringing us on board again. Appreciate it. We'll be, doing, we'll be doing a little more pipe bursting too here. Uh, just yeah. we put a little of that in for, for uh, you know, yeah, yeah, area too. We have this little uh, asbestos can cement uh, pipes that are falling apart that are these force mains. So we're taking the opportunity to put HGTV in front of them. Justin, what happened to your feed on, on, on uh, station 14? It was delayed for you know, it went on for two years. And you're basically a time, your time, did you, did you stop working? Did you stop sending? What did happen? Well, when we're, you know, projects are delayed like this, um, especially waiting on waiting on um, material to, to come in. Um, our level of effort is commensurate with the contractors, with PIC. And so, you know, if they're not doing anything, we, you know, we taper back as far as as far as we can, you know, maintain, you know, meetings, you know, we may push those to bi-weekly um, just to conserve budget. You know, everybody's conscious of that. Um, you know, we don't want to have to come back and ask for more money unless it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. But, um, you know, we, we base our, our effort, our level of effort, uh, you know, along with that of the contractors. So. That's Did you come back for more money on trucks on the station? Um, you know, I don't believe we did. I saw, I don't, I'm going to say no, <laughs> but we can't remember. I will follow. Him. <laughs> I don't know, Phil, can you help me? Ask I, I, I don't think we did. I don't think so, but I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, don't man, have all the records. Long change orders, I remember like. Permitting and we, we did. for requiring more signage wasn't that pump station permitting? Yeah. No, no. Uh, but but we did have a we did have a change order for this con for the pump station fourteen contract. It was it was minor. It was a hundred thousand dollars on the one million seven. Yeah, and I yeah I don't I don't recall any amendments. No, we, um, yeah, I just, I just yeah. looked real quick, and, and we yeah. had no amendments on on this contract. Um, the change orders are, you know, obviously, you know, on the con on the contractor side. Um, but yeah, as, as far as um, some of this time, we've managed the budget. And if you're interested, I can look and see where we are on on budget on that project. No. <laughs> thanks for the pizza. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. sorry there wasn't enough. <laughs> wasn't your fault. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? Uh, motion? Make a motion. Uh, that we approve and authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council to execute task order number nine to the master of service and agreement for construction management services with Selmuth Inc. for the lift station 12-932 lift stations. Improvements project, project number 907, in the total amount not to exceed $305,558. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Aye. 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 No. Thank you, everybody. All right. We look forward to a great project. All right. Good night. Thank you all. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. let's go to item eight. Item 8 is conduct public hearing in consideration of the resolution number 23 1647 approving the report of sewer service charges for fiscal year 2024 and directing the filing of charges for collection by the county tax collector. We will now open the public hearing on this item. Steve, please give us a little background. I can help you with that, Director Kathy. Oh, well, sure. Please, please. <laughs> but, um, so annually, the board uh, knows the district's uh, initial uh, report um, to the county of Wren so that we uh, can receive our sewer service charges via the tax board as an annual uh, plan. And the report contains a listing of each and every parcel within the district service area, uh, includes a description of the parcel, the address, the APN. 
um, and the amount of the sewer service charge um, assigned to that article. Like the board knows there are several different um, charges depending on the use per parcel, the location of the parcel, and as the finance committee um, uh, pointed out to us yesterday, uh, list, missing in the list of our um, sewer service charges for fiscal year 2324 uh, is a separate charge for Murray Park, um, which is the board of the room was by a set sewer service charge of $472 per parcel when it was uh, administered by the county of Marin uh, prior to it being annexed to the district. So uh, the, the, the Murray Park uh, charge is missing on the, the table. Um, and in fact, actually next year, it won't be on the table because it will be part of the uh, Ross Valley rate zone. And it was in the report. And it is absolutely in the report. Um, the report also, uh, because this is a public hearing, uh, was published in the Marin IJ uh, twice on two separate dates, once on July 10th and once on July 17th. And the purpose of the public hearing for the board uh, this evening is uh, to consider any uh, protests or objections to the report um, prior to uh, adopting the resolution. And, uh, the report in its entirety, as Director uh, President Gaffney just mentioned, is printed and available to the public uh, at the board meeting offices. Thank you for the report. The uh, uh, Finance Committee looked at the report and covered the many, many pages of 370 <laughs> or something like that. Not like we read on that. I glanced at it. It looks like a bunch of what is it EDU numbers and the addresses and yeah and the dollars and dollars like a computer for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Felicia. Any member of the public interested in comment is invited to comment. Are there any members of the public? I don't know if anyone's the public. There uh I uh, you know here where I put it was the public hearing. <laughs> Don't we have to adopt? Yeah. You know what's interesting about this is we, we're doing this to collect it on with property taxes, okay. which is by far the least expensive way we can be at the mail office. How the dedicated staff for yes. the least yeah. the county charges us uh, technically, but it's much less than what we would do. So that's what we're doing. Um, so a motion to be in order. Are you there questions? No, I move the uh, we adopt resolution number 23-1647 or approving the report of sewer service charges for fiscal year 2023-2024 and directing the filing of charges for collection by the county tax collector. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. You don't need a roll call. Mm -hmm. yeah, roll call. No, no, but can I just add one point is that um, just for informational purposes, this will be the fifth year of our five year established rates. So next year at this time, we will go through another Prop 218 process mm -hmm. and we'll establish likely another five years of rates. We haven't yes. done that for five years. Okay. Just a add. point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we'll have a rate yeah. study before that. Help That's us right. Set those rates. <laughs> And that this we just have the finance meeting you know, and support say this represents another um, 5.8 percent increase in the rate yes. according to the plan we set and our entire budget that we adopted last month is premised on the fact that we are adopting this we actually know what we're doing maybe five years excellent <laughs> okay, item 13, consideration of authorizing the GM upon review to approve tax order to the Alaska Service Agreement with Ardora for communication and outreach service for an amount not to see exceed $155,000. Uh, yes, so we've uh, been working with the outreach and communications team um, for several years now, I know the task order to the same group of folks that uh, used to be with NC5 that we hired in 2017, uh, now work for Artura. 
Um, this past year, we they had a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget and uh, spent that down. And so we're proposing uh, a, a minor increase in the budget. It's kind of a cola, but a little bit less than that, um, because we do see a need to have some budget available to work with them um, as needed. We may not use all the budget. Two years ago, we only uh, spent about one hundred twenty-five thousand uh, dollars with uh, our Dura, and and so we think this is a good budget to work with uh, because you know the uh, the potential to have to do outreach related to the larger landing property. Uh, we may want to do some kind of event related to our one hundred twenty-fifth year anniversary next May. Um, so we thought it made sense to. Uh, recommend to you a uh, similar budget as last year. Um, they helped us with the ribbon cutting events, uh, all of the branding and um, event programs and getting the word out, help with press release development, for that, and, um, work with our staff to you know, get the event planned, uh, map out where we put everything and that sort of thing, just you know, for the logistics. So we do appreciate their help. They do provide us, as I mentioned in the staff report, we do get a, a pretty thorough accounting of their activities. Every month we get a report. Um, you've seen that a couple of times I've had them at about the halfway point of the year, summarize metrics on our website, on the GM bulletin that they help us with, um, and, and other things just to show uh, what the metrics related to our outreach efforts. And uh, we can make them available as, as soon as you're interested. Um, I think I'll plan another mid year uh, metrics update for you just to get, give you a sense of that, the outreach that we're doing with Next Door and, and other, um, other venues to get a good word out. So, um, yeah, we, we recommend staying the course with them as we uh, did with the IT consultant earlier in the meeting. It's that time of year where we re-up our annual agreements and uh, feel that, that at this time it makes sense to continue working with them. And uh, I don't know, I think with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. They're there today. Yeah. Yes, I was going to say, it's a nice day to be talking about them because I feel like I really, it's, I see the same guy running around. Yeah. Everybody was trying to give out water bottles to everybody. Um, Lawrence was all in. Yeah, it's Lawrence. That, I, one Lemon Anderson opening, will they help us with that? Okay. With that yeah. event? Sure. And then it occurs to me, um, if Doug, if we're having trouble getting the IJ to write about us, we advertise with the IJ. Oh, I think they're going to write about us. Through uh, Ardura. We're, we're so going to get an article. Maybe we should have Ardura call no, the IJ and no, say. No, he, he, he and I spoke about that today. Okay, great. Um, he's going to send them photos of today's event. And a written and, document uh, too. Hopefully, yeah. I but I think Steve's answers to uh, uh, Adrian were really good. Okay. I really, I appreciate that. You got them, you got them out real quick too. I just realized the state of print journalism in the world it might might make sense to have the people who are placing the ads for us in the IJ mm -hmm. also say, "Hey, we we're we're now a double award winning." Yeah, you haven't mentioned that award too, Adrian. You should. The one that we got tonight. <laughs> so, I, I did mention to him today. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's actually pre award. Yeah. So I said it's going to be awarded on August 10th. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got there early and Lawrence was like a director who's going to be very low. Somebody had to do it. Exactly. It's funny because my brother, since I said, we're going to use red. Uh, Oh, uh, 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 that's why. Yeah, yeah, he had it. You know, all over. Okay. Uh, uh, any other questions? No. I move we authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council to approve task order number two, the master services agreement with Ardura for an amount not to exceed one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's go on to 14. The consideration of authorizing the GM upon review of council 
to execute a contract with Pan Pacific Supply for rehab of pump number three and pump number four at pump station 15 Pinfield in an amount not to exceed $135,630.38. That's good. Uh, second, I'll, I'll introduce this briefly because um, we're weighing some different options of dealing with our major pump station, which pumps two thirds of the flow from our district to CMSA. Um, if, 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 to remind the board, if there are five pumps, there are two smaller pumps that are relied upon for dry weather flows, three major pumps that are 450 horsepower each uh, that move the wet weather flow. We rely very heavily on these three pumps. They're known as pumps two, three, and four. And so uh, they're showing their signs of wear. Uh, they're, they date back to around 2001. And at the same time, we did the, the wastewater capacity evaluation. You might recall uh, we published that in early part of this year. And the, uh, the pump station capacity uh, recommended it increased slightly which would warrant a replacement of these major pumps. Uh, uh, but that requires an engineering study of the force main system, which is also under capacity. So they, these are not decisions to be made uh, hastily because so much is riding on you know, the, these assets as far as you know, our viability, our meeting our mission, uh, because they pump so much of our wastewater during wet weather. So uh, we were looking at these options to replace pumps since they're showing signs of wear and tear, or do we repair them and, and make, make them get by for a while while we do a more uh, careful assessment of long-term infrastructure needs for the area for capacity evaluation. And we came to this recommendation, which is to rebuild two out of the three pumps. Now, I think we could have Include this because I realize that the finance committee, Noel Sandoval, our, our pump station supervisor, pointed out that we did rebuild pump two and it has been successful. And so, really, that gives me more confidence in this recommendation that we can move forward with rebuilding the other two of the three wet weather pumps. Um, so uh, but with that, uh, we wanted to proceed carefully, and as we discussed at the Finance Committee, we're going to do them sequentially, so we're not taking the poles out of service here as we get closer to the wet season, we'll do one at a time, and they may take about a month each. But we still think it makes sense at this time to do the rebuilds uh, for infrastructure reliability uh, in, the near, in the next few years, but we're going to study carefully uh, increasing capacity and what that would take. Uh, to rebuild major pumps like this is not inexpensive. Uh, we are talking about 135,000, but as the staff report points out that I worked on with Paul here, um, this, is, this has been budgeted. We put this in the pump station maintenance budget. This value is within the budget we've been provided. So I just want to let the board know that. But uh, Paul, I would like to you to offer your thoughts on this decision uh, that we've talked about extensively. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Um, like Steve said, number pump two has been rebuilt in the past. Um, the Pan Pacific Supply, who are recommending for the rebuild, did rebuild pump two in the past, so we know they're a reliable company. I've used them at past uh, employers as well. Um, through this wet weather, we did really good. It was year to remember, as you guys all know, and we pushed that station to its limits. Um, we were pumping all we could and then some. And you know, through that, we did hear there were some bearing noises, some seal failures, little vibration stuff that's showing the signs of wear. You know, if we could possibly watch them at the same time. If one is to fail during a wet weather um, storm like we had this winter, we're done. There's no keeping up at that point. So um, just from what we've seen, and what we've been um, seeing and observing through wet weather, it's it, they're due. Like Steve said, they were installed in 2001. So these pumps have served a good, useful life. They've done us really well. Um, and <clears throat> after we did do some other research, we looked into possibly doing a dry pit submersible somewhat like that, uh, like we did at Pump Station 13. 
the cost for one pump was $450,000 without any pipe work, construction work, anything. Half a million dollars a pump, one pump alone, no work included. So we think this is the best value for the district and our best option. Um, you know, we have a really short window in the summer to do work on these big home stations and make sure we're ready for the next go around. Um, and so with that, we did review a couple, uh, we had a couple other companies come and take a look at them. But like I said, Pam Civic has worked at our station before. They know these pumps and they came to be the most reasonable uh, price for the work. And um, yeah, with that, do you guys have any questions? Um, we did ask if the estimate you know, I don't know how it came up, but the oil was adamant. We're not losing two pumps. We're not going to send two pumps over there at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and we were looking into it with a window to see if we could you know, stagger them because sometimes we've been dealing with these long lead times for parts and whatnot. And then uh, talking more with the contractor and letting them know our concerns, they are going to put us to the top of the list and start working as soon as they come in. So that was part of our, you know, verbal agreement that we've had with them. As soon as it's approved, they're going to get us on the schedule and we're going to start as soon as possible just to make sure we're done, hopefully by September, October. September is at the latest. Is one pump worse than the other? Yes. Um, number three has got a bearing issue. It's crunching. It was running at full speed, and we were having to just keep pumping grease into it, yeah. even from overheating and having that bearing failure. So they during wet weather, we were having to stay there 24-7. And then number four, the, the seal was leaking. And uh, it ultimately put some debris into the sump pump, which then flooded the, the pump room where we had to go out and manually pump it down because so much water was spraying out of the mechanical seal from where the balloon is, what's actually pumping. We're losing pressure out of the top of the pump and it's spraying inside the pump room. That was the October storm? Yes. In 2021. No, this last year. Okay. Yeah, this is more than that. Good. And Noel has worked. There. I got to give it to Noel and his crew. They have done a lot of That's work. Right. They machine the shafts and clean them up and reset the seals. But again, once these bearings start going, it starts to wobble, and there are very tight clearances on these mechanical seals. It's basically a ceramic bases that holds the pressure in there, and they spin on one another. So once the bearings start going wobbly, they start losing that contact, and it starts letting loose. So it's. Uh, it can be, you know, it's very precise. There's such a big pump. There's really tight clearances, and it needs to be very aligned, smooth, and balanced. So they're going to take it out, balance the impeller, machine the shaft, put new bearings. It'll basically be pretty much a brand new pump from what it originally was. What do you do? If it's not working, then do you, do you have a bypass, or how do you? There are we have bypass ports. Um, but they're 12 inch pump. They would take us two to three, six to six to eight inch pumps to bypass that station at least. So there are ways around it, um, but we would have to be ready, I'd say, a month ahead of time just due to, you know, we've seen what wet weather is going on around here. Trying to get a rental pump last minute if a pump <laughs> fails is. Is very hard. You probably have to start ordering Baker tanks and start pumping into tanks instead of piping, pumping it down the the, the forge main to CMSA. We'd have to start lining up tanks and filling tanks, basically. Yeah, we we're, we're not. I mean, we're pretty good with two major pumps. Yeah. You know, so when, if one's out of service, you know, really, uh, pump stations are planned for operation designed around this idea. They call it firm capacity. Firm capacity is what's your pumping capacity with one pump out. Yeah. Mm. And so there's there's some conservatism built in. You know? So if, if uh, we have one pump down, we get by. No. Yeah. Um, but not under like the record storm. Right. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll get all three going under those circumstances. Yeah. So, and you know, that takes a while to build up in a system of momentum for that. Uh, but it's been quite a wet, wet, wet winter. You know, even though we only had two storm related overflows of that whole wet 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 weather um and there were no pump station related spills um you know 
it started to show its wear and tear um, through successive storms. And you know, going from memory, you know, there was like the last week in December, then in through New Year's, into January, there was the ninth, tenth, and the twelfth. I mean, there in January, you know, and there was just a successive barrage, and then we had another wave in March. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we were tested. It rained in May too. Yeah, a little bit, but that was, that was not. Uh, but March, March, we got hit with some some, some scares, uh, no spills. Like how? Pardon me. How long will it take? I think. How long will it take to do one? So you pull one out, and fix it up. It should, depending on. It's a tight time limit. Yeah, <laughs> about four to five weeks. Okay. Yeah. Where do they do the work? Well, Pan Pacific is. Yeah, they're local. They're in Concord. <laughs> and you were saying that they, we actually uh, remove the pump. Mm -hmm. Our crews do, right? Yeah. And then they they take it, it, they right? take it to their own machine shop, balance shop, do all the coding and repair work offsite. Yeah, and so they don't reinstall it either. They assist with that. They will assist, yeah, just getting it off the truck and getting it there. But, yeah. but we'll be there, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, our knowledgeable crews know how to connect it back up. So be, ultimately, we'll, we'll be doing the installation uh, alongside that. This is not much as I was seeing. That's the rebuild of the place at this point. Oh. On the bargain if we get in a bag. Hey, you brought the the uh, CMSA address. Is it thirteen oh eight? Oh, they have the wrong address. <laughs> <laughs> they have it right on the left hand side, but on the right hand uh, side, they don't. And thirteen oh one Anderson Drive. That's right. That's okay. Well, yeah. That's where we have our board meetings. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool, cool. Okay. Well, only for only for now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's pretty cost effective too. This, you know, you know like when, when was two done years ago? Yeah, before I was here, so yeah. about five years ago, I'd say. So it's, and 23 years yeah. I've on pumps. That's really good. Yeah. Again, these are the larger wet weather pumps. They don't run on the day to day. Oh, okay. They're mainly utilized high flows. Um, but when we need them, we need them. But yeah, I mean, I I, think, I guess Noel was referring to October 2021 when it did it went offline, right? Went offline. Um, yes, sir. that was a generator issue. I think that's at that yeah, point. that's right. And I don't know. I when I'm speaking with him, he said that on station 15 because he associates it with me because I live very near that's to it. <laughs> made him cry that year, yeah. literally cry. So yeah. and with, yeah. he, well, he just was so scared about what was going to happen. Um, if one of these pumps went out during those extreme wet weather events. Yeah, it just kept coming, you know. So it was a very tough day for him because he was there the whole day and the, the, had gone offline. And so we were, it, he was trying to catch up the whole day and, and it didn't relent. It was nine inches of rain in 12 hours, 12 inches of rain in 24 hours. And, and I called just, you because it was coming up my bathtub and I said, this is the early warning sign that something's wrong at pump station 15. Yeah. We should have skated. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is new construction and it is the lowest, that's the lowest bathroom in the whole thing that I'm pretty convinced. But yeah, I, I was like, no, this is bad. <laughs> it wasn't good. And, and, and you couldn't catch up. So that's why you know, it got emotional probably at a certain point because it wouldn't stop. And we, you know, our big pumps can catch up. If we get a little bit of a dip, you know, mm -hmm. then we can get back up to the window. And uh, it was just there was a wall of water that just wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And we we're just fortunate. If it, it, it and how much of that? Work. I mean, and it, and that's in effect the storm drain at that point, right? Oh, if we fail or what's the bypass if we if we're overwhelmed? Well, at that point in the in the weather events. Mostly is, the, is the the sewer is serving as the storm drain because the storm yeah. drains are overwhelmed. Is yeah. that right? Is yeah, that yeah, accurate? yeah. It's pretty accurate. It's it, yeah, it is. I mean, it's uh, the percentage uh, rainwater. It, it's pretty high, you know. And, and shallow groundwater is eighteen to one under extreme levels. You know, like what was coming in CMSA, one hundred thirty-two mgd. Right? Do the math. You know, the normal. Uh, it's, there's six, four, four, five, seven. 
And that is, and that is that because switch. of intel and information. <laughs> that is because of poor laterals and such. Yeah, everything adds up. Yeah. Okay. And then just this that it goes illegally, <laughs> illegally connected roof drains, you know, foundation drains. It all adds up. And uh, in our system, it's a really remarkably high peak. You know, that's eight, you know, 17 parts rainwater, one part wastewater uh, during October 24th, 2021. Right. I move that <laughs> we authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council to execute a contract with Pan Pacific Supply for the rehabilitation of the pumps and bricks in room number four at PS 15 in Penfield in an amount not to exceed $135,640.38. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll move that we authorize the general manager upon Thank you. Okay. Um, you could say this letter, letter, let it break this. Yeah. See how we miss. No. You've been so happy today. He was describing how the pump station work and his ears started wiggling. And now I have to keep looking over there, but I can move my ears. It, there, there's a muscle, and when you get happy or excited or you yeah. have some sort of reaction to something, you, your ears are going to wiggle. And then Noel's ears will wiggle. Wow. I'm really happy. Yeah. yeah. He was really proud today. Oh, yeah. I deserved it. That's true. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to item 15 consideration of electing board officers, representatives, and committee members for fiscal year 23 24. Uh, we all know what this is. Uh, so, do they have any nomination? I, I think what we do is have nominations if there's you know, some poll election separately, but kind of do them all at once. So I would nominate uh, Michael for president. I second. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Another nomination. Treasurer. I'm happy to serve as treasurer. Okay. I, nom I nominate Mary. Second. Okay. Uh, alternate secretary, alternate treasurer. Do we need these offices anymore? That question. Are they required? Oh, that's that? an excellent question, Director Gaffney. I don't know that I can answer that. I'm not sure I can answer it either. Okay. I would nominate the panel for alternate secretary. We can look into that. Uh, more yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Alternate treasurer. How about Mr. Kelly? I'm going to Let's move on to all the other ones. Oh, we'll see you there. Oh, well, should, should we pass that? Us? Okay, we'll go ahead and okay. uh, Any further discussion? Uh, nominations? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Do I remove the slate? Or that? Well, there was a motion for each individual one in a second. Okay. So yeah. I think that encompasses the. I think it's a little bit different, but as long as there's a motion in a second for each individual, it's okay to do longer. Okay. We have motion second for each other. Oh no, now so we'll just take a vote now on, yep. on all the votes. Okay. All in favor? Right. Aye. 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 Okay, we've got you there, Thank you. Uh, representatives. I'd like to keep the same committee. <laughs> I, I, think it yes, I as well. We certainly don't want to pull that off. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. Short term. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would be honored to serve. I think we're doing good work over there. Right. Sure. Right. And, and I would love that Tom is behind the scenes on the fight. Uh, Tom, Tom, we I, left, I, I think I should have mentioned that on the uh, other it. commissions there, we left Tom on as our finance. Each of the CMSA members has a representative on that, you know, Tom's hours. And then uh, Gene and um, Eli. Eli, thank you very much. And, we're, and we are meeting, uh, we've got a meeting scheduled. Yeah, the only way. Yeah. I mean, you know, there were days when I'm reminiscing this meeting. There were days when we were in lawsuits against CMSA. Yeah. And our board members are not treated. Well, and yeah. 
no for some reasons, deserve, for some sometimes deservedly so based on my yeah, observation. Right. And now we are part, you know, we're we're working so collaboratively. And the and the experience that Tom brings to you know advising us about our finances and then simultaneously advising the MSA about his finances couldn't be better for both entities and for all the people of the Ross Valley and the members of the JPI. <laughs> I think it's key that he, he, as he's the outgoing president. I'm and, and, and Tom, you understand more about the details of the finances of these entities than you know any anybody wants to. And, and I recommend the CMSA alternatives. <laughs> it's all it's all the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've moved that. Second. Um, move and second. Uh, C S R N A. Take a vote on that. Okay, let's put it. All in favor of the central learning positions. Aye. 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 Point of information, Mark Kathy. I'm sorry. Cool. Motion and second for each individual. Did we not do that? No, only the second one. Did we have a motion and second? I move that we may, we not change any of the CMSA commissioners for alternatives. Second. <laughs> okay. So let's vote on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, CSRMA board member and CSRMA alternate, and this is generally happened to pass up. Mm -hmm. Michael is an attendee there. I, I move that we keep the same uh, board yeah. member and alternate. Second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, North Bay Water Association. I move we change nothing. I second. Any further discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 The board committees. Uh, I move we keep the same board committees. Uh, the president of the board and, and Tom on oh, yes. Yeah, shouldn't it be Michael? Oh, I see. Yes. So I move Michael to join Tom on the standing finance. Um, I would move. What about Mary? Tom and Michael will be finance. Okay. Okay. What is there a second? Oh, because you just said second. 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 Okay. That's not who it is. Well, let's. let's and how about the ad hoc committee? Um, I'm already. I'd like to either. stay on those. How about you, Doug? Are we talking about the business? In education, no, we were uh, in an hour. Hour. Uh, well, they're all at that. Is I mean, the yeah. HR committee. I'm sorry, so. Michael and Mary, or yeah, I, I'd like to prefer to leave the ad hoc committees all four as they are, unless somebody wants leave all four, all, yeah, leave all of them the same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. All right, I move that we remain on the same ad hoc committees that we are currently on. Second, okay, thank you. So let's board on you know, all of the board committees. I'm in favor of uh, the, the board committees with no change being Michael on the finance committee. Replacing me. Replacing yes, me. All in favor? Aye. 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 What else? Now we just get to get all of them. I like this board compensation policy statement to, you know, we, what we, it says what we don't have. <laughs> which I like. Okay, let's move on. I have 16, so I think to make this plain. I'm good. Okay. Um, Uh, yeah, this is a monthly metrics. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot. I, I know we had um, a minor spill. It was actually the new category four type mm -hmm. spill. It's less than taking out uh, not drinking surface water. But we'll still track those. Uh, uh, but it was minor. And as with, with all, you know, on page 16 of 18, which is for second point, um, we could put a little explanation in there for the SSO then what the what the cause was and what the corrective action is. So in this case, um we had um some access difficulty to do a proper maintenance. So we're putting a new manhole in where the rod hole is. Where in the system is that approximately was that you remember all the 14 gallons? Oh. 
It was. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. No, not off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Might have been a pair of backs. Or was, no, that was the previous one. That was the previous one. Let's play a fair anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. All we are all those septic systems. <laughs> you know what's pretty interesting? Six of 18. Well, I can, I'll pull up the file, though, to let you know where it is. Yeah, so, um, you know, this is the end of the year, uh, end of the fiscal year. So, uh, you, want, you know, these are kind of the fiscal year total and everything. Oh. Wanna, and uh, you know, for water use on page 9 of 18, you see that you know we're our percentage of recycled water has come down, um, but we're still doing a lot of recycled water use. You know, we're still over three hundred thousand gallons a year, uh, which is half the size of the Olympic swimming pool. Or a lot of other agencies use other lift members, JPO members. I I think so. I, I think. Sam Bell and Corbin are still with uh, Corbin Bear and Roy. So. Yeah, Corbin Bear is doing uh, their. Um, Contracting out their maintenance right now. So they're the contract with CMSI. Well, not for not the line thing. Not the line thing. No, pump stations. Only the pump stations. Yeah. But uh, um, you know, th this is we're we're optimizing recycling water use. That's really what our business plan right. says. And and so you know, if we use only recycled water, we're going to have wear and tear on our equipment because of the high chlorine and high solids content. And it affects our productivity and our line cleaning, uh, you know, the time that we take. So, we're, and and then we uh, the new uh, the new Vacon. We don't think it's perfect to use recycled water. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just it's got like smaller hoses and uh, there's other. It, it causes problems with the pumps. Yeah, but it's a little bit too much debris. Yeah. So you know, this is about the you know it's like a one third, two thirds, maybe even a little less, but. You know, that's the, the type of the quality of water available to us and, and how long it takes to fill up. This is what we're evolving toward. But also, we're using more water. You know, we're doing more work mm -hmm. uh, than we did in the past year. And the, well, we did, used to do 800,000 gallons a year of water use. This is now a million two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. or more, or no, is that right? Mm -hmm. Eight and three. You know, yeah. a, a million one and change. So, you know, we are using more water, but fortunately, you know, we're, we're able to use a good chunk of that recycled like water, but it isn't what we were doing during the drought. We had uh, impacts from that. This year, we are accelerating line cleaning. We're really trying to catch up to where we want to be, and we're going to be there probably at the end of the summer and hopefully not have to do extra overtime work next year, but we'll see how things go. Um, but that's part of the, the story about the water use. Not that we're not committed to the recycled use. This is where we're getting in the optimization. Would, would there ever be recycled water that wouldn't have a negative impact on the machinery? Or in the alternative, will there ever be a point where we, where they create cleaning <laughs> uh, trucks and I systems can, that can yeah. handle the? Crushy water. <laughs> that plant, so you may the water, but something less than potable is there a step in between? Yeah, you know, we're there's been some recent developments, you know, and, and I won't we'll go into detail this time, but there might be opportunity for CMSA to do a tertiary recycled water plan, you know. So if, if that opportunity presents itself, then yes, we would be like Las Colinas. And Las Colinas. Yes, tertiary quality water that doesn't exhibit the wear and tear that we're seeing from the, the lesser quality here. So, you know, it's it's not off the table, but it will require investment, uh, multi agency effort, uh, which is not out of the question. Yes, we'll, we'll talk more about what we learn in the next couple of months about that. Uh, it involves the golf course, the meadow. Club golf course has an interest in developing recycling. We're going to learn more. So anyway, that yeah, and that's what I have on the metrics. We had a lot of uh, example uh, in our um, from our crews, as always. And you know, Paul, maybe you have some summary you'd like to provide for us. Yeah, of course. Um, well, you know, we've been having some crazy weather. It's hotter, it's cold. So you know, summer heat advisories have been coming out. 
Um, so this last month we did heat illness training for the signs and symptoms of heat stroke and whatnot, make sure the staff are aware of each other um, and can are, can take care of each other in the field, make sure people are getting shade if they need it and whatnot, you know, generalized uh, summer safety training. So we did that this last month. Um, staff work with Pacific Infrastructure, We uh, the pump station crew, we've got pump station 24 and 25 generators are installed and working as designed. New transfer switch at um, 24 as well. So that's good news. We, I, know we, I know we had a lot of delays with shipments and whatnot, but this is the final phase. We're getting done with this project and um, everything's getting installed and working properly, which is really good for this upcoming winter. It will be a real um, security blanket over there. Yeah, you know, 24 and 25 are pump stations. They pump yeah. from local areas on South Elysio into the force main. So they're not high volume, but they have to be high pressure. And, and it's a lot of riding you know, next to the hospital and everything. And uh, those generators, uh, we've talked about it before, but they were old. You know, they were natural gas generators. Natural gas generators in generator from the 80s. And there's no way that we're even remotely meeting water and emissions. So, so what are they doing now? The diesel. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're the best, but low you know low emission diesel. The new particular filters are not really good. Yeah, so it's way it's a huge environmental improvement on, on those old nineteen eighties generators. Yeah, and then uh, line staff, we actually collaborated with Duke's uh, root control. We did a small little test trial on a line in Ross, 615 feet of pipe. Um, they came out and did it first for free. They were up in Novato doing some work. So we're doing a little case study. We're gonna go back in about six months and see the effective effectiveness on the roots. And they did a whole manhole and 600 feet of line um, just to see how it's working and possible future projects, um, if it works out. Because, you know, when, a lot of our backups are due to roofs and grease. And so if we can uh, try to get some of these roofs out of our system. What uh, was that one? What's what, that? What really was it? <laughs> um, I'll look it up for you. Oh, it's okay. I don't know exactly where the road. Later. I'll start adding them in there for you guys. So you <laughs> that way you guys know for sure. Yeah, and we don't have to bug you about it. Oh, it's uh, part of it. So wait, what are they doing? With, it's are they putting something in to kill the root? Yeah, so it's a it's a side? foaming agent, uh -huh. and it actually when they put it in, it sticks to the walls of the pipe, so the water just goes by, but the root the foam will stick to the walls, uh -huh. and actually uh, it has time to activate, and then it just kills the roots back, so that they're not into the pipes. It's pesticides. No, it's no. a herbicide, I guess you could say. They've been using it for a long time. Uh, when I was here at CMSA, we used it over at San Quentin Village to treat because all the big eucalyptus trees over there. So it's a little trial. We're going to see how it goes. Um, no killing the fish. Okay. <laughs> What's that? No killing the fish. Okay. No, no. <laughs> this is don't, in just the, don't tell me the name of the product, please. Don't tell me <laughs> okay. It could only really go to the treatment plant. Yeah. 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 And then the treatment plant has to meet toxicity. That's right. And, yeah. yeah. So they, they have fish tanks. They have fish tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. They actually bring the fish in and test it. The bioassay testing. Yeah. yeah. So like canary and cage. Right. Right. So if, if they start doing like, oh, yeah. belly, we haven't heard anything. No, this is very minimal. It's, you know, um, like like I said, they were in Nevada for three weeks and they did about half of their whole system. Really? So they, I mean, you can do a good amount of it. It's been tested and proven. Um, if we ever get to that point, if it works out, we can have a representative come up and speak to you guys about it and what they're using. And um, But the dilution rate from Ross to here, and there's there shouldn't be any issues at all. Like I said, we've used it at San Quentin Village while I was here at CMSA <laughs> to treat the wet well and manholes and whatnot right there. So, um, and then the repair crews, uh, we've shifted some staff members into the repair and line flushing crews for the summer just to get some uh, defects taken care of. You know, dry weather is the best time to do construction. So, they're doing a lot of open cuts that we've been waiting on through winter and whatnot. Um, 
which include fix and offset joints, a failed six by four wide, visible grade five voids. Um, so they're really working hard to make sure that we're ready for this upcoming winter and take care of a lot of these spots that are letting debris and infiltration into our system. Um, condition assessment. Um, we've been working a lot with the, the lateral enforcement program. They recently collaborated with the homeowner. Uh, they own 41 Laurel Avenue in San Anselmo, as well as 14 Roland Court. They're adjoining, but on either sides of the court. Um, so we're working with the homeowner to try to identify and help them out, make sure which laterals were failing and whatnot. So we're trying to collaborate with the homeowners as much as possible, be open with them, talk to them, work with them so that they know what's going on and why we're there. Uh, we don't want to just send enforcement notices and then just tell them, now just go fix it. You know, we really want to be there for them and work with them. So we're really trying to do that. Um, and then rolling into that, uh, so far, since we've enacted it, we've sent out 53 enforcement letters. We've had 20 complete laterals replaced and eight active permits for replacement right now. About two thirds of people have responded positively and have gotten the work done. So we're really hoping to continue this trend and uh, work with the homeowners to make sure that um, we can seal up our system and, you know, Fix some of these really bad voids and stuff. I know you guys have seen some of the pictures I've sent you. Um, so I think it's going to be really good moving forward um, to correct some of these major deficiencies in our system. What's a void? Uh, so basically, a hole in the pipe that just lets dirt and rocks oh, just fall okay. right in. Hole in the pipe. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wanted to point out on page six. So during storms, all the percentage of the flow gets up. So we have the nearest pond in our area of our apartments. And it really impacts us because we look for six months and we were we average less than 42%. But then we hit 49 and 50 you know, during the deal. And so so much water comes in on the Wet weather events that our percentage, we average percentage, is in the high 40s. So that's why it's. We got to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. We all can go. But it, it's more than right it's right ahead of us. It's slow as we go. So all the work is done. Okay. All right. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Just meeting adjourned.